How's it going there, guys? I've got a process along video for you today. So if you want to download this data set that we're going to be working on and process in tandem with me using whatever software you want, actually, feel free to do so. Uh, and if for those of you who do want to take part, we also are going to have a follow up video where we critique your submissions. So uh, this is going to be called the hashtag Triangulum Troubles challenge uh so if you want to take part in the upcoming critique just make sure you post your result to instagram and tag me and ideally also hashtag triangulum trouble that'll be uh, the one i use for this and i can take a look later on and find these images very easily and uh, do a follow-up as i say so we're going to be going from the image on the left m33 totally unedited right there linear data to the image on the right that same data, but after about 15 minutes of processing, really. Uh, so it's going to be as quickly as possible using, you know, the best tools in the job. That's the ones that I use. I'm going to take you through all of those. So it's going to be Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, uh, Spectrophotometric Color Calibration within PixInsight, and Graxpert. And those are the main ones, really. The rest of it, I suppose, is not too much trouble. But yeah, like I said, if you want to process this in whatever you want, be it, you know, Cyril, Photoshop, whatever, and have a go at this challenge too, all submissions will be accepted. And if you don't want to use my data, feel free to use your own. With that said, anyway, I've talked your ears off. Let's jump into this and I'm going to show you my quick effort at getting this thing done. So I'm just going to increase the size of this main image and take a, a quick look. at cropping this image has quite a lot of uh, stacking artifacts, of course. I'm going to move this off, apply a small amount of rotation, I think, to go with the most, you know, dense area of data, if you like, along that edge, so that's taken care of right now. Next up, a bit of a background gradient going on, so I'm going to use Toolbox, Graxpert, go ahead and apply that, and I'm leaving this with background model generation turned on as well, so I can see exactly what it's trying to take out of the image. And if anything looks wonky, uh, hopefully that'll help me identify what's going on. And it looks pretty good, I will say. I'll reapply my STF to this as the color balance is knocked off by that background removal. But if you can just see if I undo, redo, it's flattened it up quite nicely. And I don't think it has taken much, really, if anything, out of the spiral arms of the image. At least not enough to bother me, that's for sure. Um, next up. Let's color correct this image. So to do that, we are going to have to go to scripts, image analysis, image solver. So I already solved this, of course, making the uh, the previous image, but uh, it is M33, of course. So search for that, the Triangulum Galaxy M33. And if you wanted to solve this on your side, you're going to need to import, well, 1972.5 is perfect, but 1960 is what I initially solved it with, with the pixel size of 7.52 microns. Hit OK, accept the warning, uh, and then it should just take a moment to solve this thing. Once that's finished, which should be done now, we can move on to the next phase, which is going to be color correcting it with spectrophotometric color calibration. Don't need graphs, you can leave them ticked if you want and just close them afterwards. But let's let it do its thing on, uh, on this now. It doesn't really take too long. I'll try and leave this as live as I possibly can for you with some minor cuts when it comes to blur exterminator noise exterminator to save you the time of application for those but this is looking pretty good this is in a linked STF unlinked looks like that so a little bit more of a green tinge I'm going to leave it linked for these next steps uh, now we are moving on to a bit of paid software there are free alternatives out there by the way some great stuff uh, available but as I am using uh, the Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator tools for this one, that's the ones I'm going to be talking about. So as you can see, there's a bit of coma, kind of like coma on these. They look almost like they've got little tails to them. There's a bit of spurious color, the left-hand side uh, and the right-hand side. So it could be radial chromatic aberration introduced by the 0 0.7 times reducer that I used on this telescope. So this was a Celestron Edge HD 11. I don't really particularly like the reducer, if I'm being honest, but I needed to capture this quite large galaxy uh, and with a full frame camera and the reducer, it just, just fit. But the good news is, if you do have Blur Exterminator, take a look at these now, these, these corners. So just, you know, defaults, take a look at what it does. And just like magic, <laughs> there it is. You can see it's cleaned those up absolutely beautifully. 
uh, all the background kind of almost blobs, if you will, have now been resolved into stars properly. The colors look better. Everything's just more sharply resolved. There's even a bit of interest in what looks to be kind of reflection nebulosity in a few parts of this image. Coming up really nicely after rear sharpening with that. So perhaps right there, this cluster region, and then this reflection nebula. Look how much more cleanly resolved that is. Love these tools. I, I've got to say, I know I'm always shouting them out, but what can I say? Uh, <laughs> they've changed the game for me. I know I've said that before, but it is true. Uh, download the trials, give them a go. If you wouldn't mind as well using my affi uh, affiliate links for that. It does help me out quite a lot each month, which is hugely welcomed. Uh, anyway, won't dwell on it. They are fantastic tools. I'll let you be the judge if you try those trials out. And if you've already got them, then you know what I'm talking about. Next up, Noise Exterminator. Comes on, as I've said before, comes on a little bit strong for most images, I would say. Uh, before I apply this, actually, we'll just take a look at the background noise. So it's not... You know, it's not too offensive, I would say, but if we apply about 0.75 right there, just let this go and, you know, sure enough, fantastic. All detail is preserved. Noise is nuked. It's like magic. Um, check them out. Check them out yourself. You know what I mean? That's, that's my best advice. Now, next up, I think I'm just about ready to take this into the non-linear phase of processing. Now, you've got a couple of options. At this point, I'm just going to cancel my STF. If you download the link uh, from the link in the description box down below on my Google Drive, you'll find a few tools included, some of which should be these HD Stretch Unlinked and Linked RGB. This is going to be your easiest option by a mile. So just drop your linked RGB onto it. And basically that's it stretched. That's uh, That was really strenuous stuff, I realize. Or you can do it all manually with generalized hyperbolic stretch probably get to a little bit of a better end result in terms of uh, your stretch being exactly where you want it to be once you're proficient with that tool. But for the sake of speed, I'm just going to go with, uh, you know, HD Stretch Linked. It's a great tool. It's from my friend Bill Blanchon, and I'm, uh, I'm so happy you made those things to make processing so much quicker and easier these days. Now, before I do any more, of, you know, efforts on color balancing and things like that, I want to bring up the overall saturation of the image because as you can see there is some color but it looks darn near monochromatic there's almost nothing to it so i'm going to apply a blanket saturation curves to this thing so hopefully uh, if i just move the curves window away from my head slightly down there you can see what's going on but i'm going to bring this up just to touch the higher to the top left that we go like up here, it gets a bit extreme, but we can actually see through doing so, by the way, where the color ballot, uh, biases lie. In this image, there is a bit of green background model left over and things like that, but we don't want to take it to that extreme just yet. So I want to apply a small amount of saturation. I don't mind a bit of saturation in the background, as long as it's not showing up tons of color mottling and things like that. So right about there. Looks pretty good to me. Go ahead, reset my tool. And at this point, uh, I'm going to adjust now the black point. So I'm going to open up histogram tool and here we go. This is this image. Make a preview. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna drag across at the bottom right there. I'm not really massively concerned with what's being shown down here. Obviously, you don't want to be clipping data like this as that's ruinously bad. Uh, but just taking it down a notch. No harm. You know what I mean? Going from this 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 to this so you can see what that's doing the effect it's having go ahead and apply next up it's time to make a mask for the whole of the main galaxy in this image before i apply some more saturation to just that so uh, to do that i'm going to go to process mask generation range selection i'll just reset the tool so i can show you the process so i'm going to use screening to get things lined up first, so bring it across the lower limit until just about the point where you can see these wisps in the background. It's kind of like gradient and things like that. I just want them to be gone and then a tiny bit more, generally speaking. It's, it's quite hard to describe, to be honest with you, but it will make sense once you've made a couple of these masks. Now, in terms of smoothness, I do want to smooth this out, but not by tons. So I'm going to turn off screening at this point. Start bringing across that smoothness slider until some of the very smallest background stars 
uh, on their way out. You know, if you take it all the way across, they will be lost. But I want to preserve a bit of some of the slightly brighter stars in the background, as I'd like them to get saturated along with this mask. So that will do. Let's make that mask, reset as tool, close that down, close the preview. And now let's go ahead and drag this mask below that main image. Select our main image once again. Back to curves, back to a preview, back to saturation mode. And let's start cranking up the saturation just a bit. So for me, it can take some saturation, can this galaxy. It's, otherwise it can look a little bit colorless. I'm going to go ahead and apply overall to that. Definitely not that second step. That might be a little bit too far. It's looking like, and this is, by the way, just to my eye, uh, depending on your monitor, your preferences, you might not want to do this, but uh, the core could stand a little bit of red as it happens. So I'm going to do that by using a S curve. So I'm going to apply it overall, just a touch of red, which is not the effect we want, of course, as that's making everything red. But the core's gone the color I want. I'm going to bring back down now the lower values just by pulling them into line. As you can see, that core's got that nice brownish color now. The, the rest of it's been left alone. And if I just cycle back and forth, you can see the effect that that has had. Well, if you can see before, after, before, after. I think you'll probably agree it's a step in the right direction. So I'll apply that. Two steps would definitely be too far, would be throwing the color balance of the image completely out. But I think a very, very gentle S curve now might be just what the doctor ordered. Maybe just down a touch. As you can see, it's, it's tiny movements on this, but it can have a nice effect on your overall image. So once again, before, after, I think that's right where I want it to be in terms of uh, the red tones. Um, I'm noticing now I've applied some saturation, there is quite a bit of green creeping into this. As I said, we are going to tackle that probably just about last, but I think a very slight touch more saturation. At this point, you could, you know, really overdo it, but uh, it's up to you, really. Whatever you whatever you actually like to see in your images, that's the key, as long as you're having fun. But I'm going to say that particular part of colour balancing is done. And now let's tackle this kind of greenish tinge in the background, as I don't like that really at all in this particular image. So SCNR. And I, you know, if you apply this at full strength, it's going to be too much. But down, I don't know, let's give it a go up there, 4 -0. Pretty much nailed it to be honest in one you can see hopefully this greeny tint on the background gone in just one uh little application right there so i'm pretty happy at that overall and i would say for well, the purposes of this tutorial or uh, process along if you like we have gone from uh, a pretty drab looking m33 to well, I think a pretty nice one. Overall, I have to say I'm fairly happy. You could, if you wish, apply some degree of uh, dark structure enhance. So let me just give that a quick go. Utilities, dark structure enhance. Should only take a second. And if this works, yeah. It's brought out that kind of dusty structures in the foreground. I'm, I'm not mad about it myself. I, I can see how someone might like it, but for my image, yeah, I'm going to leave it out, I think. Prefer it as is. Overall, very happy. And I hope that you've enjoyed following along with this. It's one of those things uh, where my advice to you would be, if you are interested in trying to, you know, learn from this data and get to grips with PixInsight a little bit more, uh, especially during trial periods, let's say, where you've got a limited amount of time to get yourself comfortable with something and decide whether or not you want to buy it or go further with it. Just keep having a crack at the same data until you end up with a result that you're happy with. That's what I did myself when I first started learning PixInsight. I just took the same data and processed it again and again and again. And every time I did, I learned something, got a little bit better. Do you know what I mean? That's not to say there weren't some points where I took steps back, but overall, on the whole, the, my processing got better by taking that approach. And I think it is decent advice to learn by doing and especially if you can put me on one screen and then, you know, follow along on yours and you get a rough idea of color balancing and things like that at the same time, it can remove some of the guest work. So, uh, yeah, anyway, hope you've enjoyed this. Apologies for the slightly seemingly rushed video, but 
there you have it if you want to take part as i say and have your image critiqued at a future date then make sure to tag me on instagram got to be instagram that's really the only place that i can do this uh with the hashtag of triangulum troubles um i'll just pop that up on screen for you so there's no mistakes but yeah that's what we're gonna do uh so if you're interested in doing that let me know thanks ever so much for watching guys as always it's been just an absolute pleasure spending some time with you hope you've enjoyed and i look forward to seeing you in a future video till then though clear skies